So this is Dai. Alright, so for the past few years we've lived in multiple cities around the world and we're taking this month to release a weekly video about um, the places that we've lived, kind of looking at them objectively, like the pros and the cons of living there. And so throughout the month of May we are going to be talking about Sydney, Vancouver, Toronto, the Okanagan, and today we're going to be talking about Phnom Penh, Cambodia. I'm so excited to film this video because we love Phnom Penh so much, spoiler alert. And if you're interested in moving to Cambodia to teach English or moving to Cambodia for yourself for any reason, we have tons of videos on our channel about living there, the expat life, we've done a pros and cons video before. But like I said, we're going to be talking about all the cities that we've lived in this month, so we can't leave Phnom Penh out. It is the place that started this entire journey. Um, it's the first city that we moved abroad to together and we completely fell in love with. So yeah. Today we're going to be talking about everything that we absolutely loved about living in Phnom Penh and what it's actually just like to live there as a city in general in this beautiful world. So I guess a good place to start would be with the lifestyle there. Uh, it's really, really easy going. Everyone's really laid back. Yeah, like even though it's a big city, there is just the culture of it just being super laid back. Of course, there is a bit of that hustle and bustle that you will get living in any major city in the world, but it just feels different. And like, I can't explain it. You have to be there to understand it, but it's just so simple. Um, People are super welcoming, super upfront. It's so relaxed and so beautiful and I agree, like so easy to live in. It's a big city that I feel like developed really fast and it has since, it, it still keeps its, its sort of country easygoing sort of lifestyle. But speaking about it as a big city or like a place with an airport. Um, International a, airport. Yeah, a, a business hub, a culture hub, lots of uh, immigration. I think it goes without saying the food in Cambodia, actually maybe it doesn't because pe people maybe might not know about the food in Cambodia. The food in Cambodia is absolutely amazing. Like their cultural food, their native food is absolutely beautiful. It's absolutely delicious. It's just so good. Um, but on top of that, because it is a big city, there's lots of immigration from all different places around the entire world. It's not hard to find anything that you want. So if you want Indian food, Mexican food, Middle Eastern food, anything. So if you're seeking like a different kind of dish and you're looking for something maybe from your own heritage or just you're craving something, like they have everything. It's all incredibly good. And it's all so good. There's like Even the dishes, like because so many people immigrate there. It's it's Mexican people that have immigrated there who now have started a Mexican restaurant. They have Chinese food, they have sushi, they, they have, have Iranian food, like everything. everything. They everything. have everything. Yeah, like I think it's important to mention because um, we get a lot of comments about Cambodia, we get a lot of questions about Cambodia over on our Instagram, and that's a little bit of a concern for some people who are moving there. They're like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna love the food or if I'm gonna want it all the time. There's influences from everywhere, um, and the food is so, so good. We, we definitely have our like food spots that we went to in Cambodia all the time, some being local and then some being um, other places with different influences, and then like even American food. It's a falafel place that we'd always go to. Nine Wraps. Nine Wraps. Yeah. Shouts out Nine Wraps. Yeah, Nine Wraps. I'm not sure if they're even open anymore. We obviously have to pay our respects to the Cambodian cuisine as well, like anything with the Kampot pepper on it is just delicious, um, Amok, Songvat, we fell in love with Cambodian food, um, and they definitely have all of that in Phnom Penh, as well as other dishes from around the world. And then something that's also really great about living in Phnom Penh, um, and again, we've lived in multiple cities around the world, uh, and we have and we have so many more to move to and experience in our time here. The people are just so nice, they're so welcoming. Like we tried to learn a little bit of Khmer and I'm not sure that I sounded great at all and people were so nice about it. <laughs> For being in a big city like that, again like a business hub, it doesn't feel like that at all. You really feel like you're like invited into somebody's house. Having lived in other cities around the world, you're not always going to get that. So it makes Phnom Penh exceptional, um, just how lovely and welcoming the people are. And because Cambodia suffered such a a terrible 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 thing in the past we really have a lot of respect for the way that they've been able to come up again um, survive their terrible past and thrive and still have their culture still have um, their hospitality and still being really welcoming trusting people in general it's just so amazing and mind-blowing that you could have suffered such a terrible thing that happened in a country and yet even in your biggest city, that people are still just so amazing. They're willing to teach you about it um, and welcome you into their cultures. So yeah, that really blew us away. And on that note about being able to learn about the culture um, and the history, which is such a privilege, there's so many historical temples. Um, there's so many things to do in general. Yeah, like Rachel said, there's tons of temples and stuff that you can visit, 
right within the city limits. Um, almost like little parks and stuff, and, and there's, there's Buddhist temples, and just a lot of beautiful architecture everywhere, as well as if you go, you can go just an hour outside of the city limits, um, and you can have, a, you know, a temple on top of, the, of a mountain in the countryside. And going the other way from that, there's a lot of modern things that you can do as well, like go to rooftop pools, um, you can go to rooftop bars, you can go and play pool. Yeah, you can do really anything. Anything that you can imagine that you want to do, they have that there. And I think that's a really interesting mix of having, you know, such a rich history that you can dive into. And then it's also just like a really cool city to be in. Um, like you said, you can get margs on a rooftop bar. Like, that's totally a part of it. Like, if you go to Korong, there's the beach and there's so many things. You can go to the countryside. These are not very far away from Phnom Penh. And within Phnom Penh itself, they have all of these types of experiences. And then in terms of variety, Variety. This is something that we're actually asked often about like shopping. If you can go to the markets and you can find some pr really cool stuff and you can bargain and do that. But then there's also big shopping malls. So whatever your cup of tea is, um, again, it's, it's available for you. You can survive in Phnom Penh on a really low income, which is uh, super beneficial to anyone going there. Um, they run on the US dollar and riel, which is their uh, form of currency, but mainly the US dollar is, is what you'd use when you're there. And everything is pretty inexpensive and uh, easily affordable. Like if we're talking about comparisons between the different cities, when I was living in Cambodia I was getting paid $1,200 a month and rent was $350 a month. When I was living in Sydney, Australia, I was getting paid $1,200 a week and my rent was $350 a week. So it's extremely livable for what you're earning or what you're making or if you're just going there on vacation. There's a lot of really inexpensive things to do, really ex inexpensive foods to buy. Um, and it's, it's super accessible in that way. But at the same time, if you're a high earner and like a big spender, you can do that there too. It's like the whole theme of this video now that we're saying all this aloud. It's like there's so much variety. I don't at all feel like this about Vancouver. No. For example, I literally should just title this video, Cambodia. <laughs> something for everyone. There's something for everyone. One of my favorite things about Cambodia is that you're fairly central in Southeast Asia, so you can easily take flights or even buses if, if you can't afford a flight to surrounding cities and surrounding provinces like Siem Reap, and you can go to Angkor Wat and see what is like the eighth wonder of the world. Um, or you can easily go down to the beach down in Koh Rong, which is like a four hour bus ride and you're, you're at like a tropical beach. Or you can go to surrounding countries like Vietnam or Laos or Thailand, which we did often, like quite often. Mm -hmm. Like we went to Thailand and we would, um, we'd spend a weekend there and then we'd, we'd come back and yeah, it's, yeah it's, 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 it's a super good place to live for that. Yeah, totally. Like if you want, if you're the type of person that loves to explore and loves to go on vacations, like it's so inexpensive and close in terms of your time um, to be able to go to all these other amazing, beautiful places that are surrounding uh, Cambodia. And living in Phnom Penh, you have that advantage because you're right there. You're again in the city with that has an airport. So yeah, that's a massive benefit of living in Cambodia. And if you're planning on teaching English in Cambodia, which again, we have tons of videos about if you're interested, there are a lot of public holidays. There are so many public holidays. So that's why we had, um, even though we were working full time, we we still had the time to be able to go to all these places and really take advantage of it. I think it's like a part of the Canadian in us that like, we're just so amazed that you can go somewhere else in such a short period of time and for such a low cost. Mm -hmm. Cause in Canada, to even go to different provinces, it's not nearly as- It's um, not a weekend thing that you do. It's, it's not a weekend. This country is massive. So again, that's something that really blew us away um, and we loved about living in Phnom Penh. And then again, the Canadian in us loves the hot wa weather. We love that hot, muggy weather. It's just so sunny, so bright, like so beautiful. Just throw on a pair of shorts and an opened, an opened up uh, jacket and- not That's jacket, it. What do you call it? Uh, like a button up shirt. Yeah, you just uh, throw on a button up, like not buttoned up, and it's, it's that's slide it. Slide on the flip flops of the door. We, if you can't tell, love Cambodia. We love Cambodia so much as a country. We love living in Phnom Penh as a city. I think that if you're considering moving to Phnom Penh, you should just really do it. Um, we always say that moving to Cambodia changed our lives. So again, if you're considering moving there um, to teach English, we have tons of videos on that. I'll make sure that they're all linked below. And again, this month we're gonna be talking about five cities that we've um, lived in around the world. So if you're interested in that, make sure that you stay tuned. And okay, yeah, we'll see you in the next video.